have to get into it and look, but and then he, then the, somebody killed him later on. My my favorite's the shining. You ever ever see the the symbolism in the shining? Because the kid wears an Apollo ele- Apollo shirt Shit. with a yeah, rocket. Yeah. Stupid. Are you serious? Yes, and he stands up. I mean, the positions the kid takes the 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 room numbers like two thirty four was the amount of miles it takes to get to the moon. Uh, the way the kid stands up, it looks like a rocket taking off with the Apollo. It has a rocket. Looks like the Apollo right on it. Oh, that is just too good to be true. Oh, you have to look it up. All right. Larry, thanks for your call, sir. All right. Okay. So what What do you mean the movie was redacted? Eyes wide shut. Uh, according to, according to uh, Kubrick's uh, a widow, that, that uh, Eyes Wide Shut was heavily redacted by, by, before it was released. Um, I don't – nobody knows. Uh, and that's an interesting thing as well is that nobody knows what was taken out. Uh, usually, with with movies like that, you can get copies of what oh, was taken out. In this okay. case, you can't. Uh, he was he, edited. Yes, yes, it was. Well, his movies are usually quite long. Anyway, it's uh, just the term "eyes wide shut" would, you know, it's it's a good term as to how someone can believe such a huge lie. Anyway, Tony, you have comments on the subject, sir. Go ahead. Thanks for calling this morning. Yeah, a couple of points. <clears throat> right now, I'm at they possibly went to the moon, but a lot of the movie and stills are faked in a studio. And as previous caller brought up, you know, you can see the one where they're climbing down the steps of the lander and the lighting from the ceiling falls down. Um, and your guest brought up that a Russian had duplicated or tried to do the same shots. I ran across that website a couple of months ago, and he uh, apparently is an engin- a cinem- uh, movie engineer type, and he shows from the angles that they're taken, and then that it can't have been done on a moonscape. It has to have been done in a studio. And then he shows where the hills or the mountains meet the horizon, that it shows the gaps that you would on a blue screen uh, fabrication, you know, where you splice two uh, scenes together, the close and the pack. So right now, there's one point that I haven't heard anybody address well. It's that apparently they put some laser targets on the moon and that you can shoot a beam up and hit it and get it reflecting back. So... If that's the case that they didn't go, how did they get there? And it's something that, that they're artifacts that are up there that we can hit now. Well, that's Everything actually a, a good question. But one of the fascinating things about that is that they, those that technology existed before they put the reflectors on the moon. Uh, right. But, but it seems how, is that you can bounce it off the moon uh, without there being reflectors. And if you think about it, if they were to bounce a laser... The diameter of a laser bounce by the time it reaches the moon would be so wide that it would just it have no power behind it. I just don't see the no, possibility of it even working. And I'm not expert in it, but apparently, if you shoot something at the landing nominal landing point, you get a reflection that can be measured differently than other places on the Earth or up from the moon. So, so the other thing is apparently the Chinese have plans, or they do have a satellite that's orbiting the moon doing uh, photography, and at some point, that landing site will be overridden and photographed, and you'll see if the stuff's really there or not, you know. And the Chinese supposedly just landed on the moon. I don't know if anyone's watched that video, but if you want some good entertainment, uh, get on YouTube, look at the uh, moon landing for the for the Chinese, and you want to laugh at something that's absolutely as, as fake as it can get. Uh, uh-huh. That's pretty entertaining. Well, it might be mocking the United States efforts. You know, it could just be a, a tongue-in-cheek. But what's fascinating is the United States does not call them out on it either, uh, well, probably for the fact that they don't want to be called out as well. Right. So one more point. I think the behavior of the astronauts when they came back and did their first news conference was certainly not the jubilant. We have done this um and we're celebrating because this is the most amazing accomplishment man has ever done. They look kind of like um, 
football team that did something bad, and then they had to confess it and uh, hang their heads public. in shame instead of in yeah. the, the visions of glory so, with their with their V's up in the in the air. All right, Tony, thanks very much for calling uh-huh. us. Uh, have a great day, Tony. Thanks. Have a good day, uh, t- Sam. You're on the air. One, two, three, four. Jeremy. Ah, yes. Uh, Stanley Kubrick. Jay Widener had a, a, a documentary on Stanley Kubrick. What's it called? It's uh, Jay Widener. Uh, it's called. Uh, Jay yep. Just, uh, I mean. Born July twenty sixth, nineteen twenty. Your radio's uh, interfering a little bit, Sam. Yeah. If you can turn your radio down. Uh, anyway, so tell us what what your your knowledge is about this. Testing one, two, three, four. Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah. He, Come on, did, Sam. Uh, you're on air. You got to get it together, yeah. buddy. <laughs> when he did the Doctor Strange love movie, he asked for some help from the Air Force and stuff with the B-52s and things, and they refused to give him help and. He went and did it himself, and they were very impressed by this, and that's when NASA hired him to do the moon thing because he he developed a front screen projection. A lot of people use back screen projection, you know, where they use an orange screen or a green screen or whatever. He used front screen projection where he could see what's going on, but the actors and stuff wouldn't be able to see anything the movie camera. Yeah. Uh, he had several references, yeah, in The Shining, like you mentioned, there are several references he has to all that stuff. I'm sorry, Sam, we must have a bad connection. We're having a really difficult time hearing you. Um, I, I'd like to what you're saying. I'd like to follow up on what he's saying. Um, okay. he, he's talking about the Jay Widener study. Uh, it's W E I D. N-E-R. Jay Widener, you can go to YouTube. It's called Kubrick's Odyssey. Uh, but if you look into it, what's fascinating is the he, Kubrick used it as kind of a scotch light. I think that's the correct scotch light glass screen. Um, and what you can see is you can see a significant line between the backdrop and the front. Uh, so you actually have a stage, and then you have a backdrop, which, which, which would be produced by a scotch light glass screen. Um, this line you can see throughout 2001 Space Odyssey. You'll see the line. You, can, you just look for a line. You'll see it. Uh, but it's the same line appears throughout the Apollo missions. Good heavens. You can see it everywhere. Once you look for the line, you look and start looking at the photographs. He's like, oh, there's the line. There's the line. There's the line. Every photograph has a line in it where you can see the difference between the stage and the backdrop. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the moon landing never happening. Uh, We're going to be right back after a word from our sponsors, please, folks. Stick with us. You're going to want to hear this. This gets more interesting the more we talk about it. I had no idea. But uh, thanks for listening, folks. We'll be right back. We can turn back time to the good old days when the mom was saying us to sleep. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're discussing one thing I never thought I'd discuss on the radio is whether or not the whether or not the moon landing ever happened, or if we even got past the Van Allen belts, or how that how they attached that dune buggy to the lander, like we were just talking about during the break. We're gonna get to that in just a minute after we take a call from Scott. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Hi. Um, yeah, I heard some skepticism in this show and others. Uh, about these retro reflectors allegedly left on the moon, uh, several of them apparently. And any, yes, it is true the laser beam will spread wider, and the moon does reflect laser, specifically because when meteors hit the moon, they melt the rock, and before it falls down, it congeals into little glass balls, and glass balls reflect the majority of the light back to the source where it came from, like retro reflectors do, they're not as efficiently. The retro reflectors, of course, are, are made out of cube corner reflectors. So the point here is that the way you can distinguish them, uh, you shoot a 
very short duration uh, laser uh, beam pulse at the moon, uh, at the uh, point where the laser reflector in question is supposed to be located, uh, and then you uh, check for the signal, uh, see how it goes by time. You should have a very sharp uh, peak at the time uh, appropriate for the laser reflector uh, and a broader return uh, from the surrounding uh, lunar surface. So that's where you do, you look for a, a peak by time. Should be as short as the uh, laser pulse itself that you sent up there. And I don't I don't have the equipment to do that. And I'm not an electrical engineer, but that's the way it would be done. Uh, now, a question about that line on the uh, sets or the pictures: uh, Was it wide, Eyes Wide Shut or which movie was it that supposedly also had this stage backdrop line? 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh, it's 2001. I'll have to see if I can find a copy of that and look for it. Yeah, especially when they're uh, the apes, the ape part. Oh, the ape part. Yeah, oh, when the where the obelisk is down that, there um, on the planet. Yeah. What do they call that? What do they call that uh, black uh, monolith thing that they uh, uh, communicated the ma- apes with? Is I think it was a it monolith. Was? Was the apes they around it. the monolith. Yeah. Uh, here's something else to look for when you're watching the 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, look at how the spaceships move. They have this jerking motion to them. Now, when you get a chance, look at the, uh, what was it called, the Eagle that was, or, or, and the, uh, the Lunar Lander when, it, when, they, when they dock together, and look for the jerking motion. You'll see oh, the same thing. Of that? It, it looks exactly like the same like they use the same exact system, the same exact technology. Uh, technology. Exactly, exactly. Oh, hey, you got to send me a, a link if it's on YouTube or Vimeo or something like that. Yes. Well, right, and hey, that's hey, one hey. thing that I saw. I, I heard about that, and I looked it up, and I saw the how smooth the modern uh, technology is, the real-time docking and so forth, well, this, compared to that old uh, stuff where it's all it's jerky. kind of like the old science fiction where they had little tiny models that, uh, they uh, filmed for the spaceships doing whatever. Precisely. Okay, hey, thank you. Bye. Thanks, Scott. So, you guys, there's some co- sort of um, awesome dune buggy. It's obviously not um, combustion engine. That I wouldn't think, work. No, they, they had great 60s technology batteries back then that we don't have now uh, that enabled that dune buggy to travel, you know, Dozens and dozens of miles. Uh, I, I got to say, the dune buggy thing is just one of the most ridiculous aspects of the moon landing. Uh, I mean, first of all, you have this lunar lander. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that the engineers, when they first thought of the lunar lander, weren't thinking, hey, how about in about uh, seven years we throw in a dune buggy, let's leave a spot for it. Uh, no, they would have used every spot. They would have used every little space inside that tiny lunar lander to make sure that it, it, it achieves what it's supposed to do. Uh, and then in the later missions, they decide, hey, this is getting a little boring. Let's throw in a dune buggy. I, I mean, think of the, the logistics involved of trying to stick it in a dune buggy without changing the design of the lunar lander. What, do they throw it in the trunk? I mean, it's, it's impossible. They actually say they put it in a compartment on the side of the lunar lander. What, now, where's that compartment? Uh, you'll have to look it up. It's, they, they show it how, how it unfolds from the lunar lander. But think about putting a compartment on the side of, a, of a, an advanced aircraft that's never been tested. I mean, it's the idea of well, it. Well, they, they even show one being tested on Earth, and it, it failed miserably and exploded. Yeah, it almost killed Armstrong. Yeah. Um, but then to take this dune buggy, which serves no scientific value whatsoever— to take this dune buggy and then have an astronaut drive it around the moon with the possibility of falling in a crater, busting an axle, it's insane. There's just no way they would have done this. Hey, but uh, all the, uh, I just got to add one more thing. On the AULIS website, AULIS.com website, you can see a study where they actually believe that that dune buggy is a remote-controlled car. And you look for it. Uh, you can see the arms on the guy do not move. The astronaut moves. It does look like it's a remote control car oh with a re- with a that, fake what's astronaut. What's that website again for our listeners? And it's A-U-L-I-S dot com. Fascinating little study that was done on whether that's a remote control. Go okay. ahead, caller. You're on the air. How you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Awesome. We're having a lot of fun here. 
I got a challenge for your audience. Uh-oh. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, have them go to Google, type in the word satellites, and uh, see if they can find any real photographs of them. Type in the word... Satellites. Satellites. Just satellites. And see if you can... See if you can find any real photographs. An image could be, you know, a painting, but a photograph is a photograph, right? We all know what they look like. Yes. Well, try it out. See if you can find one. Okay, we're we're looking right well, I'm, now. I'm looking at some right now, but these are not photographs. They're all right, artist they're depictions. depictions. All artist depictions. Artists. Yep. CGI, cartoons, crayons, uh, you name it. Where where are the real photographs? Are they are these like um these aren't taken from the International Space Station. Uh, I don't know. No. But I, you know, I, my, my question is, That's I get really out. That's a interesting point. I get out at night in, an, in a remote area, went with my family up to Jackson, Wyoming, to a really nice resort up there. And we were, we just stood in the night sky and we watched these things going overhead. What is it that's going overhead that you can see clearly? Well, I actually oh, have that- an uh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. I actually have an answer to that. Uh, uh, sometimes those lights that go across the sky go crisscross. Now, if they're geostationary satellites connected with the orbit of the Earth, allegedly, then how do they crisscross? Furthermore, how do they even move across the sky? Wouldn't they be stationary since they are supposedly attached to the gravitational pull of the Earth? It doesn't make sense to me, but maybe the caller can has some, something to add. Go ahead, sure. what's 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 illuminating them in the middle of the night? Well, the sun from the other side of the Earth, supposedly, like the moon. Well, even when the the sun is on the total opposite side of the Earth, they're still okay, illuminated. Yeah, what are they? Explain. <laughs> tell me. High flying jets, in my opinion. Oh, I, I have questions. I don't have the answers. <laughs> okay. But I got a lot of questions. Two o'clock in the morning. What's that up there? Wow, that's strange. You know, oh, it must be a satellite. Well, wait a minute, what's lighting it? You know, they, they could be drones up what, there. We don't know what's going what's on. What's driving my GPS system? Well, that's... Uh, and and I've got an old satellite receiver at my home. We've got them here at the station. We point uh, right they, at those satellites, and that's where we receive our signals for what we're talking about on the air a lot of times. Well, it could also be done tower to tower, underground cables... Um, but that's how it was done back before satellites. It, Sputnik? No? <laughs> <laughs> no Sputnik, I guess. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> no Hubble telescope? Uh, who knows, you know? The Matrix isn't real? <laughs> <laughs> no. Too many red pills. What's Why your name? didn't I take the blue pill? Jason. Hey, thank you very much for your call this morning, Jason. No problem. Good show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for helping make it better. They, they... So what What he's saying is that there aren't satellites up there? That's, that's a claim. Well, okay, but then you have the ones that stay in the same spot. Right. When those, those little spots up there stay in the same spot, even though all the stars, of course, are making their path through the skies. But these will keep the same spot, the geopositioning satellites, right? Yeah, well, supposedly. I, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure I've seen one of those. Have you? Only what I think is up there. All right. And that they're run with D batteries, I think, not, <laughs> not double A's. But supposedly there's, what, 10,000 satellites up there. How many do you see a night? Okay. 10,000. Little... I mean, if they're being lit up by the sun, why don't we see... A hundred every hour go by, at least? I think we would, but we don't. Something doesn't smell right. You know that night that they did that launch of that missile out there in Los Angeles? You just this week? Yes. Last week? It looks like looks like a crazy UFO, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a big cone light. Thing. Did you see it from here? No, I heard that people I, saw it over I, Antelope Island. I, mean, I saw it. You did. I, we were on our way down Redwood Road, driving towards Eagle Mountain, and just like as if it was over the dunes that are out there, Cedar Fort dunes, right? Uh huh. 
it just it was amazing it was all lit up it was like what in the world is lighting the sky up like so that? so you you're not saying it was a, a missile launch you're denying that, that oh no 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 it may very well how, how could you launch. see a missile launch over california in utah because it was high enough up in the sky and it was at night there's no way your your view is just does not cover that much space so well, if it's, I, you you don't think I say it's impossible. I'd like to, you know, I'm no technical how much view do we have available to us, but there's no way we can see the sky above California from where we are. Well, how high up would it have to be from California for us to see it? It'd have to be in, like, space or something before we would see it, but we, they weren't they weren't testing it in space. I went down to play poker. I think it was Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So it was already dark, I remember. And it it seriously lit up. Half the sky out there. Wow. I wish I could have seen that. We we were all thinking like there was a spotlight, but it wasn't moving. It was it covered way too much area. It was way too bright. Like a spotlight, you'll see the track of the light going up and then the actual end of it. This thing was horizontal in the sky. It wasn't coming up from the earth. Wow. See, the, the official explanation is that they were testing a missile off the coast of California. The Navy was. Do you really think you saw something off the coast of California over here in Utah? That's impossible, right? Yes. <laughs> so apparently this was not a missile test and that there's so something naive. else something else going on here. And I, I I'd be fascinated to find out, but we gotta I think eventually we'll have a UFO show. But Well, uh, I, I have to tell you, just real quick, is I was um we had this apartment that had a balcony that Faced two directions. It faced west and north. Uh -huh. Okay. And it's right over here off 106 South. And the apartment building comes up far enough so that I can't see around to the south. I can only see west and north. But as I'm sitting there at night, I can watch the planes approach Salt Lake International. Right. And they come down quite frequently. So if you're having a long enough conversation with someone, you'll see several of them go by. Right? So there starts to be like lightning, and it's not quite dusk yet, but there are flashes that are bright enough that I think there's lightning going on. But there's not a cloud in the sky. And I actually stood up on the balcony while I'm talking to several people that are facing me. I'm looking west, they're facing me. I got up and walked around them and got as far a view south as I could around the corner of the building, and not a cloud in the sky. And I remember thinking to myself, this is really strange. There's a storm coming. There's got to be a storm coming. So a couple more planes come by, and one of, and then this flash happens like I had seen before. But it was right out in the view of this plane. And all of a sudden, it seems as though the plane is banking to the right and starting to descend. And I thought to myself, I'm going to watch a passenger airplane crash in South Jordan. That wow. was what I believed that I saw. And the people having a conversation with me, and they're facing the opposite direction, they see my face, and they're like, what's going on? And just as soon as I saw them change their look, this thing glows green and stops midair like a ball. And as soon as that happened, boom, it shot out over the West Mountains and was gone instantly. So everybody turns around to see what's there, and there's nothing there. <laughs> it was so vivid, and I can remember it so well. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with Conspiracy <laughs> Theory Thursday. And we'll talk more about this when we come back. Thanks for listening, we'll folks. You, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We kind of got off topic there. I'm really passionate about my UFO sighting because I was so severely sober. That'll be another uh, conspiracy I was so theory sober. topic. <laughs> we we had a couple anyway. of callers saying that there are images and photographs online, uh, some of them of the satellites before they went into to orbit, and others uh, that they've they've photographed in the air. 
we got a couple of websites on that. But let's get back to, to topic. Uh, uh, Tom, what is your opinion about some of the most convincing evidence that the moon landing never took place? Well, the most convincing for me is the lunar landers. Just no way it achieved what they claim it did. I mean, there's uh, 500, what is it? I think it's like 500 degree t- temperature fluctuations on the moon. Think of the amount of uh, technology would be necessary to keep that uh, lunar lander cool and then heated immediately on, uh, over a period of three days, not to men- mention the amount of oxygen, batteries, everything else that had to be inside that lunar lander in, or- in order for it to support life for three days. Uh, there's the no blast crater. Uh, have you ever seen the photographs of, of the lunar lander? It's, where it's just, just as smooth as icing. Uh, absolutely smooth. There's a 10,000-pound thruster on that lunar lander, supposedly. Not, and it didn't disturb the dust? No dust on the landing pads? That doesn't make any sense, or at least for the most of well, us. Well, they're as clean as can be. They're golden in color, and there's not any dust anywhere. You made a list of <clears throat> 48 reasons that you believe that the lunar landing was faked. Uh, can you talk about a couple of those? I, one, I don't, I don't know ever, if we have time for all 48. Right. But, I, I don't know if anyone's seen the videos of the, the astronauts suspended by wires um, where they fall over. And then they're picked up horizontally uh, before, and, and then placed back on their feet. It's obvious that something's pulling them up. I mean, you can actually see videos of, of, the, of the wire sometimes shine. Did they uh, just lose these videos, or did they get no, leaked? You, you can all, or? No, it's just they're bad editing, I guess. I, I actually am a little shamed of NASA that they didn't do a better job of uh, making well, sure that— Well, I mean, that was clear back in 1969. So. Yeah, I guess they didn't expect that it would be plastered all over YouTube uh, four years later. Um Here's another idea. In the, on the moon, everything's in slow motion. Why is it in slow motion? In actuality, it all should be faster. Uh, there's, there's no drag? Exactly. So what they came up with is this idea of let's make it, you know, 66% speed, and it makes it look like it has this otherworldly uh, feel to it. Yeah, and then I saw one of those that had been put back to the re- regular speed, and it looks like just was just as common and normal as if you were going to be doing it, uh, Josh, just— Running along. <laughs> uh, here's a huge one. Thousands of quality stu- uh, quality photos taken by these photos. Fo- thousands. By, yes, thousands. thousands. And thousands. they had no aperture settings. No way to adjust aperture. No way to adjust zoom. They Just were strapped to their chest. Button. And they, they smack it with their, their gloves because they would look like the Michelin man with their gloves trying to smack this camera that they can't even look through. Yet we have thousands of studio quality photographs. Is that possible? I mean... I, we, we, unfortunately, we don't have Marcus Allen on any, anymore, but uh, I, I, I'm sure that even a, 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 it would be difficult for a, 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 a actual photographer to be out there and be able to accomplish that. To thousands of photographs, one I think the photographs were taken like one every uh, 20 seconds or something. If you do it on average, why are there no transvestites in space, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Who said there's not? There isn't. You know why? Why? Because there's no drag. <laughs> so, anyway, this this makes more and more sense. More and more sense the more we talk about it. Um, the, you consider just the photos alone. But see, we're not just talking about the photos. We're not just talking about the lander. We're not just talking about the buggy. We have several dozen topics to talk about. And there's only one backing up that it's true. Is that they said it did. Yet there's tons of evidence that shows that this is a complete and utter sham. Right. I, there's one huge one. If you can ever go on YouTube, we look it up. It's a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Uh, and on that video. Now, let me shows- explain what that is. That was actually an official BBC British broadcasting video that they did a documentary to disprove that the moon landing ever happened. It's one of my favorite. I I looked at that and I said, "Oh my gosh, this is irrefutable evidence." Now, so go ahead and get But in. but but in that in that they have an actual f- uh, footage of the NASA where they fake a a shot of the earth supposedly from outer space. You can see them taking a circular window, backing up the camera, uh, and then making it appear like the the uh, that the earth is uh, is circular is circular and that they're taking a photo of the earth from far away in space when in actuality all they're doing is using the circle of the window to create the image that it looks like the earth and you can see them actually do that fakery right on uh, on nasa's video themselves 
Um, not to mention that in that f- footage, to further prove it, is that there's a cloud that spans the entire diameter of the Earth. Uh, one cloud. I, yeah, one cloud spanning the entire diameter of the Earth. That doesn't make any sense. Well, in, in that video you're talking about where they have the circle and the window, they made a mistake a couple of times. And you see when they move yes. the the cloth or whatever it is that they're putting on, on the image, it's evident. Why didn't they edit that out? <laughs> Uh, here's a, another big proof. You know, no one has been beyond, according to NASA, 400 miles above the Earth for nearly 42 years. Last time of the moon was December 14th, 1972. Yet back then we went 234,000 miles to the moon and back, and nowadays 400 miles is the limit. So 460,000 miles total. Yeah. And back, I mean, why didn't they ever take the space shuttle and just kind of? Go on a little cruise around space for a little bit. They never did that. Why didn't they? NASA doesn't have a good answer for it. What's the latest What's the latest movie to come out with the greatest technology that shows that people are dancing around in space trying to fix vehicles and stuff up there? Well, gravity. Probably. Gravity. Yeah. Gravity, right? And what are they up there fixing? The, the space station or a spaceship? Yeah, They're space fixing station. a satellite or something, right? Maybe the space station. I don't know. And I the, don't remember. One thing I remember is that these these little pieces of debris are whipping by and tearing holes through all sorts of stuff. If you look up at the sky at night, you're going to catch a falling star at some point. you got all these little micrometeors that are flying all over the place. So you've got to somehow miss all these things with your ship. Yeah, and think about over a space of how many days was it? 12 days total on one of those trips um, there and back, maybe 10 days. I can't, I can't recall. Uh, but not, I mean, one little me- micrometeorite would have killed everyone. Think about NASA's funding if, if that would have happened. If all of a sudden all those astronauts were killed right there on the moon. Or, or, or let's say the lunar lander failed to start. I mean, they never tested the thing, so how did they know it was going to even start? Let's say it didn't start. What would have happened to NASA's funding? Uh, couldn't you see a, a NASA board saying, hey, wait a second, if everybody dies there on the moon, we're, we're going to get in trouble, and then we're not going to get any more funding. Hey, the, I, I got a way we can do it. Let's just fake it. Now the worry is, hey, if everybody wakes up to this moon conspiracy thing, they're never going to believe another thing we say. Exactly. Because they, they have a lot of stuff that they work with. Besides the moon thing, this could be like the biggest scar they ever had to deal with. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we got a caller here. Um, Arkham. Yeah. Is, is it Arkham? Uh, like the it asylum? Is uh, exactly like the asylum. Are you? Um, is that a play? Anyway, no, 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 no. I, I've always used this name. Okay, go ahead. Ever since my kids commit, or my uh, yeah, my kids committed me. Anyway, uh, so if you if you go up in space and observe the Earth, would it be if they ever get to the moon? Is it, are they going to see a flat Earth? And also, um, the moon is closer than they say because you can see clouds behind it sometimes at night. So that proves that the moon isn't, I don't know what they say, 400 million miles, and the sun's 400 million miles from that or something like that? It's 234,000 miles away. Yeah, and they say the sun That's is 93 like, million miles away. 93, okay. But but there's no way if you can see clouds behind it, because you can see clouds behind the sun also. Whoa, whoa, so if the whoa. Sun's up in space, if the sun's up All in right. space. An asylum is sounding very clouds. fitting right now, Arkham. No, no, no. I would... Uh, I, I'm I'm not sure I can believe that, um, but what what I do uh, think might happen with some of those photographs you know, is that the just to click away on your YouTube no moon landing video, scroll down and it'll be right there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what I'm thinking might happen is that there just might be some bleed through, like the the moon bleeds through the clouds, uh, so it makes it look like the clouds are in actual behind it, but it just might be an optical illusion. That's my you're, opinion, you're, but you're, take you're it or leave it. You're sounding like Stanley Kubrick now. I gotta go. Hey, hey, thanks for calling that's, in, Ark. That's awesome. We've got Spearpoint on. He wanted to talk about the Norman Rockwell experience. He yeah, was asked Norman to do a, a, an image on a, a painting on the moon landing. And go ahead, uh, Spearpoint. Yeah, gang, when you guys are talking about the undisturbed area of the uh, landing craft, uh, it was Norman Rockwell, you know, the, the painter. He saw the same pictures that NASA uh issued and he says this can't be right because there's a five foot nozzle with fire you know uh, uh, which can go through steel 
And he says, this can't be. So he drew, in his two cover pictures, he drew a, a, a crater on the moon <laughs> because he, he figured it out that this is this can't be correct what NASA showed me. So he drew a crater. And one more thing. Uh, there's a guy named Vladimir Terzinski, and he, he was interviewed by Martin Davis years ago uh, on the radio. And he, he mentioned that uh, he talked to a guy that... Um, said he went to the home of a NASA astronaut and saw home footage of a guy skiing on a lake on the moon. Anyway, that's a good one. That's hard to <laughs> I got some new stuff to look up. <laughs> you know, anyway, and I just looked that stuff up yesterday, Spearpoint. I was looking and saw that painting and the explanation about uh, Norman Rockwell say, wait a minute, this is just all cannot happen the way it was given. So he actually, when he did the painting, he painted in a, a, a crater underneath the, the, the landing craft. Very good. Yeah, all right, uh, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, similar to you guys on, on Good Day. So, hey, thanks for everything. Hey, thanks for calling. I just have uh, one more uh, uh, fact to address is that uh, in a vacuum, you cannot hear sound. Um, They've demonstrated this multiple occasions. You put a, a telephone in a vacuum, you can't hear the sound of it just two feet away. Uh, but you can watch some videos of, of the astronauts on the moon hammering things, and you can hear the sound of the hammer. Sorry, can't happen in a vacuum of space, and NASA screwed up. You, just like you can't hear sonar if you're not in water. Right. You can't hear sound if you're not in air. NASA screwed up a couple of times. They should have had that purely silent, but you can actually hear the hammer well, wait, very clearly. Aren't they supposed hammering. to be like geniuses? They're not. That's what. That's the thing. We we've, we've been indoctrinated to think that the NASA is just full of geniuses, but all they are just artists and CGI experts and public relations. That's that's NASA nowadays. Well, I guess they do put out uh, some things. But. So when they tell me that the ice sheet is actually thickening. <laughs> Can I listen to their reports anymore? <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. You're on the air. Yeah, that one guy stole my thumber. I was going to say that another, another thing they're keeping from us is the earth is flat. But, uh, you know, it would have been fun to kind of, you know, if they went there and, and, and it wouldn't start to, to get off the moon, the lunar the module. And you'd see Armstrong saying, well, I guess they got to get out and shine the point or something. <laughs> I actually think our, our, I think we're going to try to address the the flat Earth theory next uh, week, which uh, uh, you'll have to t stay tuned for that. Um, Thanks for calling, Larry. We're uh, down to half a minute. Uh, what do you got, Josh? What's your conclusions on this, guys? My my conclusions are it is way way too impossible for people forty years ago to pull something like that off. It really is. It's absolutely impossible. Um, the the amount of radiation, just the 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 environment that we have outside of our atmosphere is so anti-human that to, to attempt to venture out there is a suicide mission. Every single time, it's a suicide mission. You send somebody up there, they're going to die. I mean, it's really blatant, and, and, and the contrast is so stark. You just, let alone traveling 240,000 miles, dancing around on the surface of the moon... Driving around a little buggy that you just docked off of your lander. I mean, no, absolutely not. The verdict is in, folks. It didn't happen. <laughs> what do you say? We've got 30 seconds. I can't say that any better. I mean, the, the, the list of evidence uh, proving that they faked it. Yeah, NASA says, well, we got testimonies from the astronauts. Well, they're military. I mean, of course they're not going to lie. What about all the, all the contractors? Well, yeah, you know, we're not saying that there was tens of thousands of people in on this. It's just that they made, made rockets that were used for to be ditched in the ocean. Final maybe. word, follow the money. Yeah. People made billions off this. Yes.